It's another beautiful day at Living Fields, and our contestants are well prepped for their debate. But before we dive into the heat of the moment, let's go check out how they're doing on their farms. As we saw in previous episodes, some groups already gave up after facing some challenges and others claimed to have harvested, which our judges found it a bit disturbing. Let's go check on our last two standing plots. Let's join our blue team as they control the weed on the plot. Let's join our orange group as they also apply fertilizer on their farm. Our judges are seated and ready to assess their take on the topic of the day, which is genetically modified foods are a threat to the world food economy. Okay, so uh, welcome everybody uh, to this debate competition here at the Living Fields. Uh, the, the population of the world is increasing and so we expect that food productivity or food production can equally increase. Now, agriculture as a sector is a leading uh, player in producing food to feed our populace. However, looking at how population is increasing, there's been a global challenge on meeting food supply. Now, there's been various schools of thoughts on how to meet this challenge with the introduction of genetically modified foods. Now with this, there's been different schools of thoughts arguing for and against. So today each team would have seven minutes each of presentation, uh, seven minutes for the main speaker, seven minutes for the supporting speaker, and seven minutes for the concluding speaker. May the best team win. We have the blue team speaking for the motion and the green team speaking against the motion. And so shall we welcome our proposition speaker. <coughs> Good afternoon, panel of judges, fellow debaters, timekeeper, lady and gentlemen. This afternoon we are speaking on the motion, genetically modified food, I threat to the world food economy. According to Wikipedia, genetically modified food, also known as GM foods, these are food produced from organisms that have changes introduced into their DNA using a method of genetic engineering. Now these food produced from GM organism are often referred to GM food. Now at present there are several GM crops used as food source. Some of them are GM corn, GM rice, wheat, GM soya beans, oil, sugar, just to mention a few. Now why are we saying that genetically Modify food are a threat to world food economy. Now, this is a threat to world food economy because, first of all, GM foods are not 100% environmentally friendly. Why? Because there's a fear of unknown. Though it has been claimed by many experts that genetically modified food are safe for environment, they actually still contain several kinds of substances that are yet to be proven safe. So for this reason, I think GM food are a threat to the world food economy. I will end here and invite my fellow debaters to continue from here. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Alex from the other side. My name is Daniel and I'm with Sammy Kukua. GM food are not risky as compared to traditional crops. They always say that they have no empirical evidence and even they have, it sounds pukupukus because there's no way that it has been proven that GMO foods are not good. Secondly, in terms of nutrition, 
sometimes or most of the times most of the crops terrestrial crops we grow they don't have certain micronutrients so with uh, GMO food they introduce what we call probate vitamins A and these will rather prolong the lives of people and then help to even decrease aging in 10 years time to come we are not going to have these debates because now more people are educated. I, for instance, I always have a problem with GMO. I'm, I'm one of the first person who always criticize GMO foods. But I've taken my time to do my research and I realized that for all along, we have been deceived by this bad press telling us that GMO foods are not good. Thank you very much. My name is Mark Abuga, a representative from Group 2. First of all, the opposition claimed that we have 7.8 billion people in the world and out of that 1 billion of it are not getting access to food. You can't make such a claim with no source, no fact to that. That was not made. A research was made by Jack Hineman, a New Zealand genetic scientist. In 2018, he was actually comparing genetically modified corn and soya bean from US, which is a country that has embraced genetically modified food and non-genetically modified corn and soya bean from Europe. He realized that during a catalog of both at the end of the year, there was not so much uh, higher yield from US than the Europe. So the assertion trying to proclaim that GM mod uh, genetically mod modified food are actually going to produce higher yields than the ones we are already using is actually false. Or last but not the least, food supply at risk. As as now, there have been claims that yes, genetically modified food are going to provide a lot of food for the world and those things. Genetically modified food are patented, they are trademarked, they are acquired legally. You have to sign contracts with those in companies before you can get access to it. Naturally, they are trying to tell us that they are creating monopoly for specific companies yeah, yeah. who only have to control the world's economy. Just as you rightly said, 7.8 billion people in the world. And we are only going to depend on this selected few companies to as a source of uh, food, it is not safe. So based on this uh, points that have been raised, we, we still stand by the point that genetically modified food are a threat to world food economy. Thank you. My name is John Doe, and I'm representing Group 1. And I'm here to rebut on all that uh, the opposition said. Uh, there, there is no scientific backing that GMO can cause all that my opponent said. GMO can cut levels of naturally occurring mycotoxins, a toxin that causes both health problems and economic losses, and also some GMO foods such as vitamin A and rich rice have been fortified with vitamins and minerals to create health staple food and help prevent malnutrition. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon again. And uh, my name is Richard and I'm, I'm, I'm standing in for group two. I would first of all like to rebut uh, what my opposition uh, debater said earlier. Um, they kept saying that uh, there is a proof that GMO cannot affect the human health. But they never stated where they got that information from. Move on to the second point, which is that there can also be a conflict between a buyer and a manufacturer because there can be an abrupt increase in prices of manufactured items. We know that GMOs are very expensive. My, 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 my brother from the opposition said that they are excessively expensive. And that can affect 
food supply. That can affect food for example, because it's going to get to a point where the buyer is not going to buy the food again, and so the client or the customer consumer is not going to get food to buy. We would like to end our debate here. Thank you very much for your audience, and God bless you all. Amen. Amen. I'm I speak against the motion. GMOs foods are a threat to the world's food economy. GMOs or no GMO, there's the use of glyphosate. Okay, to the, our conclusion. For scientists, GMOs are not only solution for food security, but they are an important one, combined with improved farming conditions, better use of water, reducing waste, GMOs can help to create better food options. The science and testing and approval process GMOs are required to go through before reaching the market should build public confidence. They are put through a tougher process than any other food product. But strong lobbying from organizations against GMOs have created a negative public perspective that even science is having a hard time to break through. Results show that, on average, GM, GM technology adoption has reduced chemical pesticide use by 37%, increased crop yield by 22%, and increased farmers' profit by 68%. This research was finally supported by German Federation Ministry of Economic Cooperation and Development. However, 30 years of research and 20 years of commercial experience have shown that GM crops are not ris riskier than conventional breed crops. This, this conclusion was drawn by the World Health Organization, Union of German Academies of Science, British Academy of Science, British Royal Society, the Mexican Academy, Academy of Science, British Medical Association, and etc. Thank you. So first of all, I'll say thank you so much for your delivery uh, on the subject of uh, GMO being a threat to world food economy, both for and against. Uh, generally, uh, an impression was created that there was a lot of work that went into uh, the presentation that was uh, given here today in this uh, competition. Um, a few uh, observations I made um, in the course of the delivery. So the first is that, uh, you know, we demarcated each person's responsibility. So we had the main speaker, the rebuttal, and then the concluding uh, person to, to, to crown it all for us. Uh, but then uh, from where I sit, it, it happened that some of the uh, rebuttals seemed to be presentations on its own and some of the concluding remarks which is supposed to encapsulate the presentation from the beginning seem to have been uh, different ideas being introduced. It, it, it makes uh, following the conversation very difficult. And the second happened to be uh, the delivery of the debate. Uh, there were instances where the presenters were reading instead of presenting to us and in that respect it doesn't bring out the eye contact that you're supposed to have with the judges or the audience. Uh, and if you're able to present without reading a lot, then it makes your points more convincing because you know with debates, it's not just about the speaking, body language, eye contact, all of that count. To highlight more of what he said, the presentation too was, to some extent, prepared in about three out of four points and you were to stay focused with the fact that you had making particular references to journal that you have read and what people have stated in recent publication that bring more points to you when you are talking about the various sections under which we were judging you for submission at some point yes other points i would say were quite not satisfactory uh, especially on the point of reading scripts
Let's go check out the second round. Panel of judges, colleague debaters, our wonderful audience, good afternoon. I'm Paul Day and I'm speaking on behalf of Group 4 for the motion Genetically Modified Foods are a threat to the food, world food economy. Let's have, there's no data on the health and safety of genetically modified foods. Actually, the cost involved in getting genetically modified foods or uh, engineering this is so high as compared to uh, conventional foods that we take. For instance, you have to cross genes, you have to move genes from one organism to another, and that comes at a cost. And then, when we say cost, somebody may say that the cost will be the cost of just transferring a gene from one organism to the other. The truth is that the expertise needed even to be able to do that is very expensive and rare. So one other thing is that it makes farming attractive. When I say it makes farming unattractive, one may ask how. The truth about it is that here I am, I'm an indigenous farmer, I just have a little and I want to cultivate. Then GMOs come and then I have to buy seeds. I have to buy seeds that are so expensive that I can't buy anymore. That is going to push me out of farming and then I wouldn't want to try it anymore. So at the end of the day, GMOs make farming very unattractive. On this note, I will say that with the letter that has been said, we start with the motion that genetically modified foods are really a threat to the world food economy. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Afavi Emmanuel, representing Group 3. And I'm speaking against the motion that genetically modified foods are a threat to the world food economy. The largest falsehood currently in circulation is that GMO represents a threat to our health, our food supply, and then to the environment, which myself and then my group stand strongly against it because we know GMO is the way forward. With the increasing number of years, our population is increasing. And then the earth, as we know, is, is going to be starved of resources, if you agree with me. So why not produce food to be able to feed this increasing population? Because it will get to a time where this population would need settlement and other infrastructure on this same piece of land. When we can actually genetically modify foods to withstand drought, to withstand the harsh conditions that comes with the increasing global warming. Distinguished panel of judges, it is true that GMO could be cost effective. But come to think of it, if there are several companies producing seeds or other planting materials that are genetically modified, wouldn't it rather be cheaper? It would, and this would put money in the pockets of farmers. So with this, I strongly want to say that we should seriously consider giving GMO a chance, because it's the way forward and it is proving to be what is transforming us. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and panel of judges and fellow um, debaters. Um, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Enoch and I'm the supporting debater. I want to hit on a point that were mentioned by my team. GMO are an instrument for corporate control over agriculture. This point is a very serious point that if we don't really take a look at it, it will be very difficult because GMO as it stands now is only controlled by 
or is owned by only six companies in the world. Secondly, I would like to rebut what the other side raised and um, the main principal speaker. He said something concerning malnutrition. But we are talking about I'm really on the cost. So if you have if you have GMO foods that cost higher, it costs higher. And therefore, uh, even if you should be able to uh, infuse in all this nutrition within it, and it cannot be um, afforded and therefore not consume, I don't think it is really addressing the issue of malnutrition. I would like to end here by saying that genetically modified foods, it is a real threat to the global food economy based on this point. Thank you. Good afternoon, judges. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Tepati, and I'm here to speak against the motion that GMO is a threat to the global food economy. Uh, my opponents here came elaborated on their points, but then the question I want to ask is, what are we trying to achieve here? Are we trying to solve a global issue of food insecurity? If our answer is yes, then I believe we would have to make some very hard choices in order to achieve that result. Is it just to uh, pamper and keep local or conventional farmers in the system? Or our aim here is to solve a global issue of food insecurity? If the answer is the latter, or is to the latter yes, then I want to say that GMO or genetically modified organisms is the way to go. Conventional food production has been with us over time. And then we are still facing the problem or the challenge of uh, global food insecurity. So if that is a solution or that is a way forward, I don't think we would even have arrived here in the first place. And um, to even start by rebutting what my opponent said about GMO kicking out conventional or indigenous farmers out of the system, then the same argument could also be made because before the introduction of conventional way of farming, there was the organic way of doing it. Here they are coexisting together with none out of the system. So I don't see how GMO production is going to kick out the conventional farmers or the indigenous organic farmers. But then I want to believe there's a cost to producing everything. Even the conventional way of producing seeds, there's a cost element attached to it. Why don't you weigh the cost against the benefits to see if it's really worth it? Because he just my opponent just made that statement without providing any data to support the cost argument they made. It could be speculative. And then my opponent kept elaborating on um, cost effects or it was more or less speculative. It's, I believe it's out of the fear of the unknown. We can liken the argument to the introduction of vaccines and certain medicines to tackle diseases here and there. Distinguished panel of judges, colleague debaters, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Harrison Akuno, and I'm here to conclude on what my colleagues said. So from all the submissions made from my colleagues, the principal speaker and the supporting speaker, it has become very clear that accepting the GMO will be a very big blow to the whole world. Considering the health risk factors to human and the adverse effects on biodiversity, we are saying GMO will be a threat to the world economy. Hence, it should never be accepted. Thank you. This panel of judges, accurate timekeeper, fellow debater, ladies, Gentlemen, my name is Rodana Adoko Anan, and I'm the concluding speaker for my group. From all that has been said, it is clear that GMO isn't a threat to world food security, but a blessing and an opportunity to make more out of our limited resources in enhancing good food and uh, nutrition. Sorry, let us not dwell too much on the fear of the unknown 
that GMO might bring, but embrace the numerous benefits that have been scientifically proven to solve global food insecurity. Some benefits are drought and pest resistant foods, um, some medicinal foods that will help against uh, some diseases, and then increased food production. Thank you. Well, during the third and fourth team's presentation, um, both teams went well. Just for the fact that the concluding speakers, I don't know whether it was like the first two speakers had just used all the water and did not have any water to bathe with. It was as if you did not have any words to say, but to just strategically end up within less than a minute of your presentation. Notwithstanding that, I think some of the data given, I don't know how your research work were done, but um, in the morning presentation and that's of this afternoon, there's a bit of varying figures that came out at the final lesson. So let's be able to cite figures that are really right and general for both. So with me, uh, these are a couple of points I noted. Uh, the points that were made, uh, the presenters were not coordinating their points well. It's like the points were made haphazardly thrown left, right, center. They were not consistent. So. That's one thing I would sound out. Let's take note. Yeah, but I will give a general comment. So it happens that we were tasked to research and come for a debate, okay? And in that respect, the presentation looks so, okay? But how about in the course of our presentation, we tell a story, okay? We don't just talk about what we found on the internet and just dump it into the face of uh, the judges. But then we tell a story out of whatever claims we are making. How about we starting our presentation by talking about malnutrition in Africa and how, you know, children and people in Africa are living under one dollar a day. How about citing some other instances of farming and talking about how that is going to impact on food security. I believe if we make it that way, it, 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 it convinces the audience the more. We have come to the end of the debate and our judges work together to award the winners for the day. The results are handed to our host. Let's go see who earned what. All right, contestants, congratulations to all of you. The results are in. So, the team that came in with 56.5 over 90 had 62.7%. That was the last team. The team that came third with 50. 59.5 over 90 with 66.11% was the third team. The team that came second with 62 over 90 making 68.88% second team. And the first team with a whooping 72 over 90 making 80% won the competition so so the fourth group is group one with 62.70 percent the third group is group four with 59.5 over 90 making 66.11 percent the second group is group 3 with 68.88% and the group that won this debate competition is group 2 with 80%. Still 
continues. Keep watching us, keep following us. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.